In this video, we're going to cover how to create and configure a port-based security policy in the Palo Alto. So the idea of a port-based security policy is if you have uh, some sort of a network, such as the internet, with your Palo Alto separating between your clients and your internet, uh, the port-based security policy, you might be able to say, allow port 80 or port 443 through the firewall out to the internet. So let's see how we could do that. So here we currently have our pretty generic configurations. Basically we have uh, outside to inside, I'm sorry, inside to outside. So from our internal network out to the internet. And if we look at it, uh, our source zone is inside, our destination zone is outside, and then there's pretty much no restrictions as far as what can get out. Uh, additionally, we have a NAT policy to allow everything to go from the inside to the outside and just be translated accordingly. And now if, so if we open up a web browser, we should be able to visit pretty much any web page out there. So currently there's no restrictions on what what applications can run. Uh, for instance, we just tried some web pages. We could also do ping. So if we ping google.com, um, pretty much there's no restrictions on what type of access can go from one zone to another. In this case, from our inside zone to our outside. So maybe we want to start adding in some restrictions. In order to do that, uh, port-based restrictions, let me specify that. Uh, to, in order to do that, what we need to do first is we come up to Objects and we choose Services. And this is where we can help define what services we might have in our environment or we might want to work in our environment. Uh, you can see here that there's a couple of services uh, that were predefined. Uh, specifically HTTP, HTTPS, and these are the associated ports with them. There is an additional one here for FTP, which was created additionally, and then we can go ahead and we can add in additional services, which we'll do in just a moment. In order to utilize these services, what we do is we come over to our security policy. And we modify our security policy, our internet facing security policy, and that's under the service slash URL tab. And on the left hand side here, we can choose what services we want to allow in our security policy. So we go ahead and so we say add, I'll just go ahead and add HTTP and HTTPS and then say, okay, go ahead and click commit. And as this commit goes through, what we should see as an example here is that our pings will stop. Specifically, our pings will stop because that's not one of the policies or one of, one of the ports that we allowed to go through. There we go. So this is a very traditional method of configuring a firewall. You specify which ports you want to go from point A to point B, and then you allow those ports through. Now, if we go up to our web browsers here and we refresh our pages, we should actually start running into some problems. Let me reopen those. We should actually start running into some problems where it will start saying that things aren't working, that we can't connect to the internet. And at first glance, the question will be why? Why can't I reach the internet? And it actually very handily gives us a hint right here. Server DNS address could not be found. We just configured our security policy to allow HTTP and HTTPS through the firewall, but we did not allow DNS through the firewall. So what we need to do is we need to allow DNS in our firewall so that we can then resolve the host names for our sites. So to do that, let's come back to the firewall and let's actually add in a new service. So that's back under objects, services tab, and click add. And we'll go ahead and we'll actually create two of these called DNS underscore TCP. 
Uh, DNS runs on port 53, so we'll go ahead and specify that as the destination port uh, with D TCP as the protocol. And then we'll do another one, DNS underscore UDP. UDP is the protocol and port 53 as well. Uh, there's different reasons why you would use TCP versus UDP. In times like this, it's best case to include both of them. Now that we've defined our services, we can go back up to policies, edit our security policy, and then under the services, we can add in our DNS services that we just created. And say OK and commit. As soon as this commit is done, we should now be able to both resolve the DNS names as well as access HTTP and HTTPS. There we go. Uh, that one automatically resolved. Apparently I missed the dot for the dot com and then Yahoo. There we go. So that's the traditional method of configuring ports in a firewall. So in this case, you come in, you define the object, you then configure your security policy to allow specific services through it.